I am prepping Leo here. So go ahead and wash him so I can fluff him out and give him a nice haircut. And so I'm going through with the slither brush here and just brushing out this dead fuzzy hair that's kind of brittle. And this is like his dead undercoat. And just kind of softening up, breaking up the coat so it's not so crispy and dry. And the reason why I'm going through with this liquid brush is because I can't get a comb through his coat. So it like his his coat's a little bit too um, tangled up a little bit, you know, crispy. So the areas where I did brush with this liquid brush, now I can kind of go through with the comb. The comb is able to kind of I can work it through. <clears throat> but the areas where I didn't comb with the slicker, where I didn't brush with the slicker brush, um, I'm not going to be able to get this comb to work through. Um, not without pulling and tugging too much, and that's going to make him feel uncomfortable. So that's why I'm going through with the slicker brush first. I've already brushed the ears, so I can go through with the comb now. But see, I'm still pulling out like these dead hairs. So that's why I'm going through with the slicker brush first. And I did spray this coat down with some coat conditioner here. There we go. Spray a little bit more. Claudia, this is Leo. Leo is a Moyen poodle or a Klein poodle. So he's a little bit um, smaller than a standard poodle and much bigger than a toy poodle or a miniature poodle. But anyways, so he's a poodle, and um, the reason why I like the slicker brush over the pin brush is because the pin brush, um, it doesn't really break up the coat as fast and as well as the slicker brush does. And especially here on the legs, while I'm brushing the legs, I can see a bunch of like dander, like skin dander coming out. And just kind of like dandruff, just falling off falling out of the skin in the coat. So that's why I prefer the slicker brush over the pin brush. Now the pin brush is a good maintenance tool. You know, if, uh, if you're brushing your dog like pretty much every day, then it, you can use a pin brush. But since he's already kind of crispy, the hair is kind of dried up a little bit, um, that's why I like to use the slicker brush. Man, you guys can't really see it, huh? All this dander just flying down out of his skin. Oh, sorry. There we go. See all this dander on the table? And I like to use a black towel so you can see it. Look at all this skin dander coming out of his, his legs. See that? As I brush, you'll see it like coming out and just falling onto the table. So that's why I like to use a slicker brush and help break up that coat and get this dead hair, this brittle dead hair out. And this, you can feel all that dander inside this hair too. So it's gonna get all of that out for me. And that way, when I give him a bath, he's gonna get really nice and clean. Any more questions? No questions, okay. So yeah, he has a Klein Poodle. And the reason why I'm using the slicker brush to break up the coat is so that I can work a comb through him, so I can work a comb through his coat. So the areas where I did brush, you'll notice that the comb can go through, and I can work this comb through and clear the skin, because the skin literally feels smoother as you get all that dander and everything, and the dead hair out of the skin, you re release it, remove it from those pores. The skin literally feels smoother. It doesn't feel as rough and bumpy. And so that means that those pores are nice and clean and clear. And when I give them a bath, the water and the shampoo is going to be able to penetrate the, the pores, the skin, and give them a really deep clean. That way, after the bath today, e even for like weeks from now, he'll still smell good. You won't get that, that dirty, you know, that wet dog smell. Um, so it's, it's so that they get quality results that last longer. So that's why I like to take the time to really thoroughly comb them out. There we go. 
So that's so we're combing out these mats. And can you see the dan see that? Like the dander and the dead hair and stuff that's, that comes out with it. Edit it focus. Shoot, it won't really focus. But you know, you saw there you go. There it is. <laughs> Anyways. So we're clearing that out of the skin before the bath. And that way when I wash him, he's gonna, it's not gonna take that long to lather him up and I'll get a really good clean rinse. And then when I dry him, it won't take that long to dry and I'll get, you know, I'll be able to get him really nice and fluffy, fluffy, soft and silky. And then when I do the haircut, the haircut will be really nice and easy. And also the quality of the hair, the haircut will last for weeks, even months. See like the dander just falling down to the towel, like snow, like snowflakes. Okay. See, so we're removing all of this before the bath. He's already starting to feel much softer and much cleaner. Uh, what kind of comb are you using? This is a Resco comb. So I like this on big doodle coats and big thick coats. What's up, Triple Lotus? How are you? see like all this dander and stuff just pouring out of the skin. You can kind of see it off here too. See it like you see those specks? So you can feel it. And it feels brittle, kind of feels rough. But now especially like right here where you can feel the skin, his armpit, the skin feels smoother. It doesn't feel bumpy. There we go. Because for me, I like, I like knowing that um, when I leave, you know, I, I'm, I can feel proud of the work that I did, you know, and I feel like I did a really good job. I put everything into it, you know, and I know that he's going to feel, look and feel good for weeks to come. You know, like for me, this is what makes my job rewarding. It makes me feel, you know, um, proud. It makes me really feel proud of the work that I do because, you know, sweating, <laughs> because I'm willing to put in the time and the energy and the effort to really do a good job and clear his skin for him because this is really about skin care. Like, yes, I want to do a good haircut so that he looks really nice, but the more important part for me, I feel like the more important role that I play is keeping his skin healthy and clear. And that takes time because we have to go through every square inch and really clear those pores out, you know, release all the dead hair and the dander, you know, the dead skin cells, all of that. And 
make sure those pores are clear and clean, and that way his skin will be healthy. His skin will have a healthy environment to function. And I think that's what my more important role is. You know, of course doing a nice haircut is important, but in order to get to that point where I'm doing a nice haircut at the end, I need to, you know, do all this hard work up front, you know, to prepare the skin for the haircut, to prepare the coat for the haircut. It's kind of like painting a wall. You know, by the time you're putting up the new paint color, that's the easy part, you know? Um, to prepare the walls properly, to sand it down, you know, do the sheetrock work, you know, do all the patching, patching work of the areas that need patching when you're you know, like the dents in the walls and stuff like that, to repair all that stuff. And, you know, do the primer. And, just getting the walls ready to be painted, that's the hard part. And I never knew that until I actually painted the wall. <laughs> but um, yeah, I found out when you, when you put the new color on the wall, that's actually the easy part, that's the fun part. But getting the walls prepared for painting, that takes a lot of time and effort. That's where all the labor is involved. And I think that's the same thing with dog grooming. You know, when I do the haircut, that's the easy, fun and easy part. The laborious part is this, getting the coat, the skin coat ready for the haircut. You know, this is where all the labor is involved. And there's a really cool saying, I never knew it before, but one of my clients told me, you, um, only a rich person can afford a cheap paint job. And, you know, isn't that interesting? What that means is, when you, when you hire somebody to, to paint your walls, if, if, if it's a cheap painter and you know, he doesn't charge enough, then he's probably gonna cut corners, you know? And probably not gonna take all the proper steps to prepare the walls properly. And they're just gonna put a new paint on the walls. But that means later on down the road, maybe six months, maybe a year, the walls will start bubbling and chipping and cracking. And you're gonna have to spend even more money to try to fix what that previous painter that did it for really cheap, you know, what the damage that they caused that you didn't see right away, right? Because they just covered up with new paint. But it doesn't stand the test of time, right? You, um, you can, when you, when you don't do quality work and take the time to do all the proper steps, then it never stands the test of time. A good groom always stands the test of time. Good work always stands the test of time. So that's what they mean when they say only a rich person can afford a cheap paint job. It's because you have to have, <laughs> you have to be willing to pay a lot of money later on down the road to fix the damage caused by a cheap paint job. Same thing with the cheap groom. You know, I feel like if I don't take the time to you know, actually prepare the skin properly, all the standard that's coming out of the skin, all the dead hair that I'm removing, you know, last season's dead coat, look at this. See all the crispy dandery stuff on there? Let's see if it'll focus on it, no? But anyways, if you can feel it, but you know, by doing that, by taking the time to actually follow you know, honor the process and, you know, do quality work. You know, they won't have to spend time or money at the vet's office because of skin issues later on down the road. So.
So all of this is old dead hair coming out. The new, the live hairs are not going to come out like this, especially because I sprayed it with coat conditioner. So if you ever seen a movie called Shanghai Noon with Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson, is it Owen Wilson or Luke? You know it's Owen Wilson. But anyways, there's a comedy called Shanghai Noon that came out a long time ago. But it, they were locked up in jail, and to break out of prison, Jackie Chan takes his robe off, takes off his robe, and pees on it. <laughs> <laughs> and his um, Owen Wilson's character is like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like, I'm not touching that, right? But he says, wet robe don't break. Wet robe don't break. And Owen's like, uh, so, you know? And he uses the, the robe that he peed on to, and, and like a stick to bend the bars of the jail cell that they're in, right? Because a wet robe won't break. <laughs> so the same idea with the uh, hair. The dog's hair fibers, when you get it wet and spray it with some co conditioners and it gets wet, now it's much stronger. So the live hairs, um, it's less likely to break when you when it soaks in the co conditioner and it gets a little wet. The live hairs are less likely to break, but the dead hairs, because they're dead and they don't have life to them, they're they're opened up. They're brittle, you know, they're not strong. The, the dead hairs, they will kind of come out much easier. But the live hairs are going to stay in and they won't break. So this is all dead hair. You can feel the difference in texture too. It feels rough and dead. And it smells. This is what's holding on to all the unwanted odor. The live hairs, they don't hold on to odor, odor like that because they're sealed, they have oils, they repel off moisture and bacteria. Especially the hair that I brushed out around that back area, it smells like pee, like old urine, you know? So by doing this brush out process first, before the bath, I literally get him smelling better before I even wash him. So after I wash him, I'm almost guaranteed a, a better smelling dog. Hey, what's up CJ Johnson? Um, triple S, I may have missed you saying this earlier, but when was the last time you groomed the sweet noodle? Maybe about five weeks ago, five, six weeks ago. All this dead hair accumulation is from how long? About five, six weeks. And it's because of the change in season as well. It's getting darker faster, so the change in sunlight is triggering his skin to start, you know, getting rid of the older undercoat, those secondary hairs, um, because it needs to release them and stop, it, they, you know, it needs to stop growing those, and we pull it out so that it makes room for the new undercoat hairs that will protect them for the new season. Keep them smelling fresh. Do you guys give the doggies a break in between? Yeah, I mean, but he doesn't really like taking breaks. I've, I've taken him out before, and he's just like, let's just get this done. What kind of spray should you, uh, any, any good conditioning spray that's made for dogs. I'm not really a brand, you know, oil. Okay, so 
Now that I've gotten them all brushed out, I'm going to go toward the comb. There we go. And so, yeah, you know, this takes time. You know, this takes a lot of time. It takes effort. And that's why, you know, for him, it, it takes about a good, what, hour, maybe an hour and a half to get them all combed out before the bath and also to shave his pads and shave the sanitary area before the bath. So the pre-bath work, the prep, takes about an hour and a half. The bath takes about maybe another 30 minutes to a, almost an hour, like 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, because the shampoo needs to sit. You know, we need to get a good rinse. And then the haircut takes like another like hour maybe, 45 minutes to an hour, because you know, I'm doing a nice scissor cut all over his body. He has a bigger dog. So let's see, two and a half, about three, about four hours, you know, start to finish. And that means that I can only take, you know, maybe another appointment after this, but usually it's just him, like today it's just him. But for me, I, I, don't, it's, I don't think it's important, like, that I do as many dogs as I possibly can. You know, and I, I kind of feel grateful, I kind of feel blessed that I'm at the point in my business where I can't take a lot of new clients. You know, maybe one or two more, and that's about it. So I'm not looking for more clients, and I, I you know, I'm not able to fit them on my schedule anyways. And so for me, it's, you know, I feel like, wow, I get to do work that really matters to me for a few people, you know, and I feel like they really value the work that I do. I feel proud of the work that I do. You know, I, I'm blessed to be able to make enough to where it sustains me. You know, and I don't know, for me, I feel like, I, I really feel like a true artist, like a real freelance artist. You know, because for me, I'm not rushing through the day, trying to get more dogs done, trying to get another client. For me, it's about doing the best I possibly can for each client that I do have and just really serving them to the best of my ability and doing work that makes a difference. You know, that really makes a difference in their lives and in the, dog, the lives of their dogs. He doesn't suffer from skin issues anymore. He used to have these really bad like brown spots here on either side of the, tip, the, hip, the bone right there. And he used to have some hot spots here and there. But now, because I take the time to really clear his skin you know, to make sure his, his pores are clear of all the, 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 it's not packed full of dead hair and dander. All this dander that's on this table I see here, you know, just like snowflakes, it's like snowing. Because I'm, I'm removing it from his skin before the bath, and then the water and the shampoo is actually able to really clean the skin for him. And then I do a really nice haircut because the skin is smooth, the hair, is nice and silky because I brushed out all this brittle dead hair, this rough hair, and I'm able to fluff them out really nice, and then I can give them a really nice haircut. You know, I feel like this is really, um, it really matters to my clients, and they really value it and appreciate it. So I'm doing work that matters for people who care, you know? I don't have to do, I don't have to try to focus on making a difference for the masses, you know? Just find, like Seth Godin says, find the smallest group possible and just make a really big difference there, you know? And when you're making a positive change in somebody's life, that's art, right? And um, Seth Godin was saying that what makes art art is that it has to have the element of risk. You know, this might not work out, you know? This might not be, you know... Like he could jump off the table or, you know, I could mess up the haircut, you know? So there's always that element of risk. And there's also has to be um, an element of generosity, you know? Like here, I did this for you, I made this for you, and I put everything I have into it. I hope you like it, you know? And that vulnerability, understanding that there's a good chance that they might say, no, we don't like it, it took too long. You know, why did it take so long? Um, where I didn't like this about it. I don't like how you did the head. I don't like how you did the ears, you know? Um, understanding that they might say that, and that's okay, you know? Because art, 
is never, is never going to be perfect, right? That's what makes art art, is that sometimes there are some blemishes and flaws. Um, okay, perfect. But I want to make sure that I do everything I possibly can to do work that I can be proud of. Alrighty. Nice. See how this comb, the comb just goes right through the leg now? It's not catching on the cut right there. It's not catching on the bundles of dead hair anymore, you know, because and the bundles of dead hair are coming out nicely now, because I went through and brushed them first. So first I go through with the slicker brush and brush him to break up that coat, so I can work this comb through him. And then once you're able to work a comb through the coat, and it slides through easily, and you're not pulling out, you're not catching all those uh, bundles of dead hair anymore, then you're ready for, for the bath. You know, then he's ready for the bath. And this is just my process, you know. I know that this isn't how a lot of people do it, but this is why I'm able to get the results that I get. And my client's dog skin issues clear up. Okay. And they smell good. They just smell really good for a long time. You know, and they look good for a long time as well. The haircut holds, you know, the shape holds. So good, anytime you're doing, you're, good, you're, you're doing good work and you honor the process and you're willing to really um, take the time to do it right, it always stands the test of time. And you know, because I don't, I don't have a lot of clients, you know, because I only have uh, 34 clients, I'm able to get to know each dog individually and their families, you know, and it becomes a unique relationship with everyone. And that's what I really like. Instead of having hundreds of clients and not being able to keep up with everybody, and, you know, um, I, this way I really get to know each one. And with Leo here, you know, I know that he really doesn't like being groomed, but, you know, he'll put up with it. <laughs> um, and because in the morning he sees me, he just like rolls his eyes and he's like, oh, I don't want to do this. But then when he gets in here, he'll jump up on the table like, come on, let's get this done. <laughs> and I usually do like to give dogs breaks in between. But with him, uh, I've been grooming him for years, which is why I don't have the safety, the grooming arm and him on a loop because I just know him, and he's not going to jump off the table or anything, you know? Um, we have a solid relationship that we built over the years. Um, about three years now I've been grooming him, because he's a new member of the film. Anyways, um, yeah, like, knowing that he doesn't really like to take breaks, he just wants to get it over with. <laughs> he's like, come on, let's just go back in and do this, you know? But, you know, knowing each dog individually, having a unique relationship with each one, I think it's... It really uh, makes me feel good about my work. You know, I, I feel fulfilled. Um, there's something deeply satisfying with knowing that it's not just a financial transaction. You know, I'm not just here to make some money. I'm here to make a, a difference, you know? Okay. I'm here to make a positive impact on the lives, on, on not only Leo's life, life but you know, the lives of his family members. And they're all happy when they see him healthy and happy and looking nice. Okay. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Okay, yeah. That's from that other back leg. So this is all the stuff that's gonna cause him to not dry as fast, not feel as clean after the bath, 
and smell, you know, it smells. It feels rough, so he's not gonna feel as silky and soft. So this, um, this step here, you know, prepping the coat, getting all of this stuff brushed out, and along with it, just to show you, along with it comes all of the skin dander. Look at that. All over the table, see all of this? You know, that all came pouring out of his skin. This was a black towel, but now it's like, you know, all of his specks, look at this. That all came pouring out of his skin. So along with the dead hair, you know, I am, I am combing out the hair, but the real um, objective is to get all that stuff out of his skin. You know, it's really about skin care. <clears throat> Thanks for the great day. Oh, you're welcome, Brenda. Appreciate you watching. And hopefully this is helpful. Okay. Because I think that most dog owners don't really understand the importance of skin care, you know, and why it's so important to do this step and take the time to really comb out all this dead stuff. Oh man. So, just to show you here, why I just combed out this bundle of dead hair, popped out of the skin. I'm not sure if you can see it. Right there, you see it? Like this, right there as well. So as I, as I combed out the dead hair, boom, it literally popped out of his skin, these like brown little specks. So, Clearing his skin so that his skin will be healthy. <laughs> there we go. Okay, there we go. Hopefully it'll stay. All right. Thank you, Leo. You're such a good boy. Okay. Wow, it's coming out back here too. All this stuff just coming out of the skin. It's usually when the brush catches on a bundle of dead hair, and then I brush that hair out, those dead hairs out, and then boom, you'll see oh, that was trapped in those pores with the dead hair. All of this skin dander, you know? All the dead skin cells and cellular debris and dirt that was trapped in those pores, they, they burst out. And then the skin literally feels smoother, it doesn't feel bumpy or grainy, you know, when the skin starts feeling grainy. Okay. Awesome.
Dios. See, so when I right hand the inside of his legs, it feels rough. But when I go through and brush out the hair, the dead hairs that are just, you know, packed inside those pores, and along with it comes the, all that dander that comes out, oh man, I see like falling like snowflakes. But as I release it from the pores, right, I get it out of there, now, oh sorry about that buddy, now when I feel it, it feels much better. Still feels a little bumpy because there's still more to, to get out, but it feels much better now. It doesn't feel as rough, bumpy, you know. Oh man, I still smell a little bit, but he's starting to smell much better as well. Okay. There we go. Because under a microscope, this hair here is just frayed open, you know? Um, all the, there's like the, the hair fiber actually has like scales on them. All the scales are just opened up. So it's all of this that holds on to the smell. But the live hairs, it's not gonna hold on to the smell like that because the live hair fibers, they're all sealed up nice and tight. So the odor causing bacteria and everything doesn't have room to, the hair won't absorb it, right? So it's all this dead fuzzy hair that's absorbing all of the moisture, the bacteria, the dirt and debris, and it holds on to all the smell, that unwanted smell that you have. So even if we washed it, you know, if the dead hair is still in there because they don't shed. So because they don't shed, we have to remove it for them because it's still in their skin. So because they don't, these are non-shedding gods, we have to re remove the dead hair for them and comb it out. And when we do that, the smell goes away because this is where what's holding on to the smell. But if it's, if it's still in there, if we don't comb it out and we just wash him, then even after the bath, he's still gonna smell a little bit. He'll smell a little better after you dry him, but as soon as he gets wet, you know, the, then the dead hairs are gonna absorb the water, right? And then once it absorbs the water, it's gonna push out the odor causing bacteria to the surface. And then when you get that, when the dog gets wet, boom, you get hit with that really nasty odor. And that's why they call it the wet dog smell, you know, because it literally happens when they get wet. But by combing all the dead hair out and removing it from their skin, then all you're left with is mostly live hairs. So the live hairs smell good, they feel silky, and they're smooth. And so when the live hairs get wet, it's not gonna, it's not gonna smell bad. So the bath really is not for the hair. You know, the shampoo, we think it's for the hair. And I mean, and it does help the hair, but the, the shampoo is really designed for the skin, to help the skin, clean the skin. You know, because the skin is what grows the hair. So healthy skin makes a healthy coat. It's not the other way around. It's not clean hair that's gonna help the skin. There we go. Now the hair on the ears I'm combing up, that way I can get the ears to be nice and fluffy. <clears throat> you know, so every time we're combing the dog, we're training the hair to lay in a certain direction. It's by, you know, combing it in the direction that we want. So the tips here, I'm going to comb them down and out with everything else. Because I want to get the, the uh, pores clear, you know, all that crud that's in there. I want to get it out. But I also want to 
trim the hair, you know, get it used to laying up, standing up a little bit, so that we can give him a nice fluffy head with the ears being nice and fluffy as well. So that's it. That's this is uh, the most one of the most important steps of the groom. You know, I think another equally important step that is overlooked is making sure the dog knows who you are and is comfortable with you touching them. You know, building that rapport, gaining their trust, because they are sentient beings. They have their own emotions and thoughts. So I think having a relationship with the dog and making sure. The dog trusts you and knows who you are and they're okay with you touching them. That's almost just as important of a step, you know. And that's why, you know, it's, it's not me keeping him on the table by force. You know, he's okay with being on this table. He, he doesn't want to jump off because he does understand the process. He knows what I'm doing. You know, we, it's just routine now for him. We do it every five, six weeks. And he trusts me. There we go. So my step one in my process is uh, build rapport, which I think is very important. You know, having the dog trust you and earning that trust over time. And then step two is this, prepping the skin for the bath. And then um, the wash and dry is pretty self-explanatory. We wash them and dry them. <laughs> and then the haircut is my last step styling and finishing the dog. But no matter how well I'm able to do a haircut, it's not gonna last and it's not gonna be a quality job. You know, it's not gonna feel nice to the touch when you run your fingers through it. It's not gonna feel all silky and smooth and nice. It's gonna feel a little brittle and rough and it's not gonna be the same quality that I like if I'm not willing to do all of this first before I get to the haircut. And this is the hard part, you know, both for the dog too, you know, not just for me. I'm, I'm sure that this is the hardest part for Leo as well, you know, because the washing and drying, you know, it's pretty easy. And then the haircut, he actually enjoys it. But it's all this brushing and getting, getting the pores clear and brushing out all this dead hair and the dander. This is the hardest part for me. And I'm sure this is the hardest part for Rio as well. There we go. But you know, they say you have to be willing to do what's difficult and necessary before you do what's fun and easy, right? And Les Brown is where I heard it. He said, if you do what's easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what's hard, your life will be easy. And I really like that. I think it's true. You know, we have to be willing to do what's hard, what's difficult and necessary, so that we get to enjoy what's fun and easy, right? There we go. Nice. Everything feels much smoother now. Soft and fluffy and silky. Okay, his skin feels much better. It doesn't feel bumpy. And so this comb that I'm using now, it is good to get the bulk out and, you know, to get really deep down into the skin level, you know, so I do like this comb for that. But if you notice, it is pretty coarse. It's pretty wide. So then I like to go through with the regular Greyhound comb, just to make sure I get everything. So here I'm just going to switch them down one more time. The hair to soak in the good conditioner. Get nice and strong. Drink some water. Ah. And then I'm going to go through one last time. 
with the comb, with this greyhound comb before. Um, let me see. Put this here, maybe I'll be able to see better. There we go, get a little bit closer. Triple Lotus, uh, ditto, great demo June. Using conditioning spray while brushing out is very informative, especially with the movie reference. So interesting, and you pick that up to refer to grooming. <laughs> Yeah, right? I love that movie, Shanghai Noon. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I love that part because it's true, you know? When the hair fiber gets wet, it gets stronger and it's less likely to break. Just like when Jackie Chan peed on his robe, <laughs> the wet robe don't break, you know? He broke out of jail. He literally bent the metal prison bars <laughs> with the robe, with his robe, because he peed on it and it's wet. <laughs> but anyways, let's see, so, oh my goodness, look at this. Uh, can you see this? So when I brushed his tail uh, with the Greyhound comb, man, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. These little specks. Anyways, it's just interesting. It's fascinating to me because it's like, wow, I'm really making a difference on his skin, you know, his skin health. Look at that. You know, a lot of dogs don't really like it when you comb their skin, I mean, comb their tail, because there's not a lot there. It's like a very thin area of skin, and so, yeah, they usually react. But that's why I don't like to start with the comb, you know, because it, then it would be too painful for them, because it would pull too much. Oh, man. So look at this. Look at all that dander that just came out. See that? So... That's why I don't like to start with this because it would just pull and tug too much. But when you break up, break up the coat with the slicker brush first, and then you go in with the more wider tooth comb, right? Then you can finish with the more finer comb like that. And it'll go through the coat much easier. And look at that. That just came out of the skin. Check that out. Isn't that cool? Like you can see how it's bundled together there with like this dead follicle. Isn't that interesting? So that's what we're doing. By brushing and combing um, the hair, what we're doing is we're clearing out the skin and releasing all the stuff that's trapped in those pores, causing the skin to get tight and bumpy and feel grainy and, you know, rough. And now the skin feel smooth, especially right here where you can feel the skin, you can feel the, where you, you can feel the difference. It feels nice and smooth now, not bumpy and rough. There we go. And now I'm gonna be able to give him a nice fluff dry when I dry him out after the bath, he's gonna be nice and fluffy. And then once I fluff him out, I'm gonna be able to do a nice scissor trim on him and make him look like a soft teddy bear, you know? And then that haircut will last for months at a time, weeks, months even. And he's gonna smell good for weeks to come because it takes time for the you know, hair to grow in and the hair that's left to die, you know, get dead and old and dry. So in that time, because we combed out all of this dead hair that's causing the odor, he's going to stay sm smelling fresh for longer. All right. And feel nice and soft as well. so much nicer. For some reason, it's always like the front of the back leg that's, that has the most. See that? Even though we've already combed the back legs, 
it's usually the front side of the back leg that you has all of this extra funk, you know, all this dead hair. I'm not sure why that is. It's always the front of the leg though, the front of the back leg. And then it's the back of the front legs. I see like this brown stuff coming out of his skin. Okay. Nice. His coat's feeling so much softer and silkier now. Looking cleaner too. It looks whiter. Okay, smells better. So all the hard work is being done now. All, you know, like, so when I give him a bath, I don't have to rely too much on the shampoo to make him smell nice, because he's already smelling better. Yeah. yeah, he smells really nice now, especially with the coat conditioner soaked in his coat. He smells really nice. I mean, almost like he did have a bath already, <laughs> you know, he doesn't smell that like that dirty, you know, that pee smell even, because some of the hair back there kind of smelled like pee, and that's all gone. I can, yeah, he smells really nice back here now. <laughs> so yeah, now when I wash him, you know, he's going to smell really nice. And then after the bath, drying him is not going to take too long. The, the live hairs re literally repel off moisture. So he's going to be air drying pretty much on his own. And so when I use the um, hand dryer, the blow dryer that I use, um, I'm really just kind of helping fluff the coat out while I'm combing him. And then he's going to be ready for a really nice haircut. There's a bunch of like just powdery stuff, white powdery stuff that just burst out of the skin there. Thank you, Leo. I know. That's uncomfortable, buddy. Especially here on their, in their armpit area. There we go. Wow. Wow. I'm not sure if you can see it from the camera, but oh my god, I'm just watching it snow. It's snowing. <laughs> okay. And so that's why you get the reaction, because their skin is probably already feeling pretty tight, you know, with all of the, um, you know, all of this dander that's falling onto my table like snow. It's all locked up in his skin. There we go, now it feels much better, it's not catching anymore. But it's already probably making him feel a bit uncomfortable. There we go. And so when we comb it out of him, it's, you know, it probably doesn't feel great. But once it's all out, and the comb is able to go through smoothly, 
then it's gonna feel much better, right? But we have to be willing to, to you know, get through the uncomfortable part in order to help him feel comfortable. There we go. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to get it to slow down, you know, get all that stuff that's coming out of the skin and all the hip hair that's catching on, you know, try, just try to get most of it out. There we go. And here on his neck, his neck was feeling rough earlier. Now it's much smoother. comb catches and I you know comb out that dead hair I see like just this bunch of powdery stuff just burst out of the skin dead skin cells you know just a bunch of cellular debris that's just been packed inside those pores and it just gets released when I brush up that dead hair see all that I just pull off my comb so there's that. All right. There we go, buddy. Now I'm coming forward. I'm coming the hair up because again, I want to train the hair to stand up nicely. So when I do the haircut, you know, the hair will be nice and fluffy and standing up the way I want. So everything that I'm doing is with the end goal in mind, you know? I have a, a clear image in my mind of what I want him to look like when I'm all done. I want a nice fluffy dog with a nice round fluffy head, you know? And so with, because I know what I want to end up with, see I'm combing the hair forward to help it, to help train that hair to lay that way. Kind of like how you can train your hair to part differently, you just keep, combing it a certain way, and parting it a certain way, and then eventually it'll lay that, lay that way naturally. Same thing, we're training this hair to lay that way and stand up. Same thing on the ears, comb the hair up. Wow, I'm just, wow, so brown, brown speck just fly out of there. Nice. To me, I mean, this is fascinating. I mean, <laughs> like, wow. And it really makes me feel like what I do really does matter, you know? I'm really helping his skin stay healthy. You know, the things that we do during the groom, they do have a lasting impact on the dog's health. There we go. The health of their skin. And a healthy skin is going to make a healthy, beautiful coat because the skin is what's growing the hair, you know? So the skin is the hair factory. And if the skin is the hair factory, then we want to make sure that the factory is running well and it's clean. You know, all the machines are, you know, maintained well, oiled well, right? So we want to make sure that the factory is taken care of so the factory can produce a good product. So if the skin is the hair factory, then I want to make sure that the skin is clear and clean and taken care of properly and working well so that the skin can produce a good quality coat, right? There we go. And that's what this is all for, is to help the skin, right? And now when I feel him, he feels so much nicer and fluffy, not crispy and dry and brittle, right? Good job, Leo. 
Alrighty, so now just do the close shaving and give him a bath and fluff him out. He's good to go. Look at that. Oh, Leo. He, oh man, he smells so much better too. <laughs> also, look at him. Oh, he's so proud of himself. Good job, buddy. All right. But thank you, Triple Lotus and Brenda, Claudia, CJ. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching this. And the questions, look at them. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. All right, I'll see you next time, guys. Um, maybe when I'm doing the haircut, I'll uh, stream live again. And that way you can see how I, how I scissor him up and make him look like a nice fluffy teddy bear.